I think, I think very broadly they're on, um, they're all, I think it's just like broad shift patterns, you know, largely based around, uh, you know, kind of like daytime hours and things like that to, to be carrying out enforcement activity when, you know, when obviously when most of the offences are, uh, are taking place really. However, you, you, you wouldn't know when most of the offences would take place as you don't know what the percentage of, of um, you're actually catching and how many people. So you might want to be my point what you're saying. So based on the feedback and the reports that we get, that information is passed to the contractor to use operationally to target their resources in the most effective way possible that they do. In terms of how we are at the moment measuring that raw performance, it's based on the enforcement activity and the FPNs that are issued. I think one of the things that members have highlighted tonight is you know, over time, you know, is that sophisticated enough and there's something about actually uh, people are, we're getting
getting that behaviour change. I don't know in time whether we could think about doing another measure in due course, which is actually about some other way of capturing that people are actually taking the dog foul in the way. <coughs> so, um, you know, that, that might be something that we could look at in due course. But, you know, the, the, we have a, a contract with the contractor and it's based around issuing fixed penalty notices. They, they need to work in the most efficient way possible as they do. Is that also where the bags of dog actually get left because there's a lots of areas where dog walkers are on the they tend to put them behind gates, behind fences or we have got spots around where I am where there's huge amounts of it sitting in piles and then gets to left. Through you check if I think what I'd suggest in terms of um, in terms of the detailed operational approach of our contractor uh, you'll be picking up, but actually I don't have that detailed answer here. I think probably what, what may be helpful is if for the next meeting or offline to members, if I ask uh, officers liaising with our contractor to do a briefing note which talks about operation, how they deploy resources at a detailed level, that would help so and how they use intelligence. So to get around the system, I just complain every five minutes, but again, that's how it works. Sorry, it's, it's so Yes, be fair to the, the first sponsors of the
Conservative Party have two different parties, one operates in Wallasey and one operates in the rest of the world. Ha ha. So part of our job is to actually attempt to tease out what the notice of motion is about. I, I don't think it's not, it's, it's about congratulating those particular groups and those policy councils, but it's also in our interest to, to extend that and make sure that that's the sentiment of it. It's as simple as that, Jane. My, my suggestion, Steve, is that we remove Wallasey and put it the place it would throw our borough. Uh, and then we leave it as it currently stands.
Uh, we are increasing the number of uh, local events uh, that we have, and some of that ties in with the council being more commercial and bringing in, uh, in more money as well in some cases. And also we have a very successful forest schools program that we promoted here. We promote we got a partnership over in New York and that body of work is progressing well. The second priority theme is around encouraging people to take part in sport and leisure activity. Uh, I hope many of you will be aware or even had a game of uh, <coughs> uh, golf and, and actually seen that. So, so that's obviously, uh, we had the launch of that recently and that's got off to a good start. Uh, and also we've been working on uh, a new social media concept, a new campaign around Active Will that's, uh, that, that's, that's progressing well and is, is starting to get traction as well. Um, and then also on the, finally on the leisure side, we've got a priority theme around increasing pride in communities and encouraging volunteers. And uh, a number of you will be aware that we have been doing some work and there's been workshop sessions around the volunteering strategy uh, and actually Fiona Johnson's been leading on some work around, around developing that. So, so that's ongoing at the moment. Moving on to the uh, onto the culture strategy and the culture side of things that is a uh, is, is a really exciting area for us. So we've got a priority theme around uh, developing creative partnerships and cultural and a cultural events program. So that culture partnership um, is under development at the moment, and I'll, I'll say a few words uh, about that later. And we're looking at establishing uh, a knowledge and a funding hub to help us drive that body of work forward. We've also got a priority theme around increasing residents and visit visitor participation in the arts, culture and heritage offer. And um, one of the key uh, early actions has been around developing a cultural event like an acti activity calendar so that's something that we've now formulated and pulled that together and certainly the intention, we've, we've even did so in, I think in the first edition, we've started to link that with some of the publicity by the new world here as well. And then the, the third one on the culture side, so there's um, thinking about world in the broader context of it being part of the Liverpool city region and some of the cultural opportunities there. So we're looking to promote Will on that international stage as part of the Liverpool City region. And there are discussions ongoing at the moment, and we had a couple of meetings earlier in the week, around the development of a city region uh, culture, uh, culture partnership. And also uh, at a city region level as well. So we have been doing some work with Culture Liverpool, and we've had some very successful recent events that have got some good publicity around for example, the International Road Festival back in the summer uh, and, uh, and tour ships as well. So that's a quick update on quarter term. Um, just, uh, just a few words around how we're taking this work forward, particularly some of the work that I've been leading on in, in, in this new, uh, new role in the hub really. So I think one of the discussions that we've had early on, particularly with the cabinet member and also with the pledge champion. Uh, I spoke to Adam Chris early on and I think one of the things that was very apparent is that this pledge covering leisure and culture, it actually covers a really broad and a diverse uh, agenda. So one of the decisions that we've made recently uh, has been to, from a government's point of view, to actually establish separate steering groups, one for leisure and one for to drive those two uh, agendas forward. So, uh, Councillor uh, McLaughlin chairs the uh, leisure uh, steering group, and uh, the, 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 the pledge champion um, chairs, the, uh, chairs the culture uh, steering group as well this week. So, uh, so um, key reasons for that is that we're actually realising that um, due to the diversity, um, it is necessary to actually have kind of different partners and stakeholders around the table to actually drive some of this work forward. 
So what we've done so far is we've, uh, we've reviewed the uh, terms of reference of both groups and we have reinvigorated that partner membership. Certainly on the culture side, we've got some really interesting new external partners that are coming to, into the fold there. Uh, from Baltic Creative and Vido Lito that do the music events and do a lot of work in Liverpool as well, and also represented from, uh, from Culture Liverpool. <coughs> and I think just a final point around this is we have recognised that there are some areas where the approach to the performance management approach does need sharpening up, and you know, quite a bit of the discussion we've had tonight has teased out some of those points. And I think just from the officer side, we are mindful of that. So we are doing an exercise, uh, really just like a, a refresh and a review of uh, particularly some of the uh, you know, some of the measures, but particularly the action plans that we've got, um, smartening them up in in, uh, in some way, uh, sharpening up the strategic focus, and also importantly, as I'll touch on in a moment. You know, over the past few months, there will sometimes be new projects and initiatives that actually come forward, and some of this evolves, so we, we need to include some of these in the process as well. So, uh, leading very much into this then, so uh, I know of, uh, of interest to many of you, uh, just wanted to say a few words around uh, some of the more transformational work that we are uh, we're, we're looking at in this area. So you will be aware that as part of the move to a new operating model, uh, there's a commitment within the council to look at the services that the council delivers, particularly the services that it delivers in-house in a very traditional way at the moment, um, and to really take a step back, look at the will plan and the pledge and the outcomes that we're trying to achieve, and really just take stock of the services that the council delivers um, you know, uh, how are we doing those, are there ways of improving the way that we achieve outcomes, bearing in mind a whole variety of factors, including things like the quite challenging financial climate that, uh, that, that the council uh, faces at the moment. So, um, just in terms of that then, so uh, I think the first of all we've got, um, uh, importantly, we've actually got a leisure and culture review, the scope of the review is that it covers traditionally what would be the uh, sport and recreation service headed up by uh, Damien Walsh. Um, the review also covers uh, parks and open spaces uh, and also uh, that cluster of cultural assets as we term them, which is the Williamson Priory and the, and the floor. Um, to actually help us carry out this review, we have uh, brought in some uh, expertise from uh, a company called BWV, uh, Bates, Wells, Braithwaite uh, is the name, um, to, uh, to lead this review. Uh, BWV are experts in the field, in this field of social value modelling and the modelling of services and solutions to deliver deliver. Um, so we have got some uh, nationally re recognised expertise coming in to help us in this area. In terms of the timeline that uh, we're looking to, and some of this might feed in chair to a, a discussion around future options, around scrutiny and, and, and how uh, some of that takes place. The plan at the moment is that uh, during the spring, uh, certainly by uh, <coughs> during the first quarter towards the back end of March time certainly, we look to have essentially what we'd call this uh, essentially a concept. So it's like a concept in principle around what the way forward uh, in this area should be. The plan then would be there would need to be a, obviously a political decision and a view around that as to a way forward. If there was a way forward moving to different models or approaches, then that would be fleshed out from that concept principles paper um, and the broad timeline would be something like um, further work leading to a decision for example in the summer and then possibly the implementation of a new model or approaches 
um, potentially during 17, 18, depending on what the model and the approach is and to how it relates to implement. So, so that's the, the broad provisional timeline uh, at this stage. Um, and as we've said there, very importantly, this is about looking at all the options to deliver our pledge outcomes in a, in a sustainable manner. Um, partly linked to that, and very importantly, so uh, as uh, many members will be aware, uh, there's obviously uh, quite a lot of history around the library service here in uh, the will, it's fair to say. And um, I'd just like to make a passing reference to another piece of work which is being led by, uh, by a company called Shared Intelligence. So uh, the leadership of the council have uh, commissioned a piece of work by them, a strategic assessment uh, by them into the library service. I think just to say a few words around the background to that, um, Sometimes we talk about libraries and it's very easy to quickly jump into buildings, money, people, resources and those kind of things. Certainly the leadership have been very keen with respect to libraries to take a step back and actually think about what does 21st century library offer look like, how would it support the pledges, how does it deliver the outcomes, also taking account of really important factors <coughs> We are a ball of real contrast with, with, with different uh, issues and outcomes in different areas. So for, for a variety of reasons, essentially those, um, uh, we, we've been keen to actually get a, an initial upstream piece of work looking at libraries. Um, and in terms of the reporting timeline for that in a similar manner, certainly during the first quarter of next year, um, we'd hope to see, at the leadership, we'd hope to see um, a piece of work and some output from uh, shared intelligence. So really then, just to, uh, ju just to draw things to a close really, so uh, uh, to, to sum up and conclude really, so overall, um, good progress towards pledge delivery at uh, quarter two, uh, I think we'd say. However, very importantly, um, recognising some of the comments that have been made uh, this evening, we are looking to take the opportunity to reinvigorate our governance arrangements, but also update and sharpen up our approach around some aspects of the, uh, the performance management side and the, uh, and the action plans. And then we're saying there that uh, we do have a key transformation project that has just started in the past few weeks, the work with, uh, work with BWB and that parallel work with Shared Intelligence, which is obviously going to influence the delivery of the pledge. So that's recently started, and we've talked about some of those key milestones going forward. And then I think, uh, Chair, with your permission, certainly, you know, bearing in mind all that from an officer point of view, you know, we very much welcome any thoughts the committee may have around uh, principle timing of uh, future scrutiny. We very welcome. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I'll take questions from members. Members first, Adam. Thanks, Chair. Um, just going back to. Uh,